Well, you can't keep a good championship down, can you? You can't keep a good championship down, especially when that championship is the EWTCR. We've been gone for a year and a half or so, but finally at the tail end of 2022, we've got a bit of a prequel to a full season to debut in 2023. We've got some old faces, we've got some new faces, we've got some faces that you probably know, um, that'd be the one next to me. I'm James Kirk, by the way, he's Lewis McGlade. Lovely to have you along, Lewis. Uh, I cannot wait to get the shootout started. Yeah, great to be here for your uh, return to sim racing commentary. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we've, uh, we've had a lot of fun over the last few years, and uh, the eSports WTCR Championship is one that's been missing from some of it. So it's great to have it back in full flight here, of course, towards the end of 2022, building up towards uh, that season next year. It's going to be a lot of fun, but if there is something to be noted from the pre-qualifiers coming into this, it has been absolutely brutal when it comes to the pace required to get in. I think it was just three tenths of a second separating first, and qualifying, of course, and 30 second and saying goodbye. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, it does not surprise me one bit. I remember fondly the yeah. times where the top 15 in qualifying would be separated by three tenths, such as the way of the EWTCR. Uh, and yeah, it has been, yeah, it's, it's been a few years since we started commentating. Uh, you're looking to take my job now as play by play, but I, I'm sure I we'll am. figure it out along the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but while I've still got the mic, let us talk a little bit about the format in general because we do say shootouts and not the full season. So the full season is a five-track calendar. That's going to be at the very beginning of 2023. But for the next three weeks, Lewis, we're going to be essentially trying to whittle down an open qualifying system into a full grid of uh, 20 drivers to eventually move forward and, and take part in that 2023 season. So it's not about qualifying on the day and then you're through to 2023 this is a mini championship of sorts to basically elect the creme de la creme yeah, exactly. We've seen this work uh, a few times where the shoot, like I say, the shootouts, they're essentially uh, a qualifier themselves to get through. And it's no one's a guarantee. No one has already no. booked their place. They've all got to put the work in now to get their way through uh, into next year's grid. And it's, like I say, it's going to be brutal because one mistake on this and, and you're essentially, you're out, you're done. You're not a part of the championship next year. It's kind of why we love these, uh, you know, th th these qualifiers, just the six races to basically decide it all. And you're absolutely right. It doesn't, it's not the one lap that matters about getting you in. As long as you know, you can come in as top seed, as top in qualifying, uh, the pre-qualifying coming into it, or you can come into it as, as 22nd, 23rd, 24th. It doesn't really matter too much. You get a qualifying on the day, you get two races on the day, and that is what's going to decide our process three. Yeah, so following a private qualification session, and it's worth mentioning private qualifying, actually. Usually, we'd only see that for tracks such as Macau uh, or the Nordschleife. This is going to be for every single session in the shootout. It'll be just you on track, although all drivers will be qualifying at the same time. We then have that first race and a second race with one of my favorite features of any racing competition, that being the reverse grid top 10 is the number to watch out for in that one point system. Pretty simple as well. Uh, if you have watched EWTCR past, it should certainly jog a couple of memories. Uh, 25 for first place, all the way down to one point for 15th. It is essentially becoming the race room standard system. Should be pretty easy to, to figure out your maths, of course, penalties and such will be adjudicated by our wonderful judges uh, in due time. Also worth mentioning, as the EWTCR and indeed its previous incarnation, uh, incarnation the EWTCC is provided, we do love a bit of a prize. We do love a bit of ingenuity. Of course, the EWTCC, one of the first championships to move from the uh, real world into, or the reality, I should say, into the virtual reality scene. Uh, we also, of course, had that wonderful land final for the 2020. 20, or sorry, the 2019 championship, I should say. Yes, COVID was that long. Over in KL, Malaysia. This time around, Lewis, $10,000 prize pool on the line. It is not chump change. And for a lot of the drivers, although they'll be aiming for first, even if you are to get in and around that top 10, you're still going to be in the money. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you just got to keep yourself in it. You know, if you're not a driver that's going to be going for the championship, sometimes they like say you just got to keep yourself in the hunt, keep yourself inside that top ten, keep yourself in the in the prize money. Uh, we should be going into qualifying in about three minutes time. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of wondering who's going to start off on the right foot. It's always important in a short championship. You've got to kind of treat this as its own separate thing, haven't you? Uh, when it comes to the championship, the shootout versus the main season, can't be getting too far ahead of yourself. But when it comes to this, with it being just three rounds, you've got to start off on, on, a, on, a, on a good footing, right? Yeah. Now, we've not done this for a while. 
the, the those that are on good footing, it, it's all completely changed. Coming into this, you know, uh, if you were just an esports WTCR fan, you might think the likes of Bets Banky or whatever they you know they might be towards the front. Whereas as we move into this this kind of like new era esports wise, obviously as all the drivers are changing around. There's plenty on that list where I'm kind of looking at them being like fantastic. Pfeiffer, Dravosekov. I mean, race winner. Was it in the last race of last year at Zolder? Or the last season at Zolder where Jean-Marco Vidicci took his first win? Got his maybe, first win. Maybe it was beautiful. he'll be looking to, uh, to move his way forward. There's a lot of it. I love it. Yeah, I mean, that round at Zolder was particularly special because we had two first-time race winners in that same race. One of them, of course, not here. Jean-Marco Fiducci is here, and he is definitely one of the drivers which I'm going to be looking at. It was a bit of a weird, stuttering finish to, uh, well, at least a finish at the time that we thought for the EWTCR. It is a very pleasant and lovely surprise that this championship is back but before that we of course had a essentially a mini season in 2020 we had uh, an, a, like a real world drivers virtual championship and we had a clash between the two so there were three mini seasons in the space of one year how much can we take from that as you say difficult to kind of gauge because there's been so much time between that 2020 season and now here at the end of 22 but Ben Spanky look he is one of the most successful drivers of all time in this championship. Not the most successful driver, that of course being Gogo Baldi. Uh, and he is someone who is not here today. Of course, the reigning uh, two times offline champion, of course, the reigning land champion being Kuba Brzezinski or Jaka Brzezinski, once again, not here. So actually, I, I like the look of this grid, Lewis, because yes, you've got a lot of drivers there who you know are in around the scene. They've been around a while. They might very well have taken part uh, in this championship from the beginning. I'm just looking at uh, Juan Manuel Gomez, for example, who was one of our first race winners in the EWTCC, the Argentinian. But we do have a load of newer drivers, some of this newer crop, and each year does bring a new generation through. They just seem to get younger and younger and better oh. and better. Yeah, it just makes me feel sick. Uh, just, just everyone's so... Uh, it's just like, oh, here's another 16-year-old that's got rapid pace. Uh, absolutely yeah. crazy. Love it. I think teams-wise, uh, there are a few to really focus on. Fordzilla's being one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. the, yeah, with, with Plishka, who was the top of the pre-qualifier coming into it. Gianmarco Fiducci, Alessandro Ottaviani, who recently moved over there from Virtual Drivers by TX3. Juan Manuel Gomez, who uh, obviously was a part of the outfit in the Cooper Sim Racing Series last year. They're looking like they're going to be a really strong team. All uh, four of those up in the top six uh, of the pre-qualifiers coming to it. Pre-qualifiers, one thing, uh, and going racing uh, is another. But yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of that. Virtualized by TX3, who have about a thousand cars out there as well. They might be <laughs> uh, one to, uh, to keep an eye out for. As well as, there is a, a couple of drivers lower down that I would, like, they might not have qualified so well. Bo Dixon uh, has been incredibly fast. Yes, more so in, a, in the open wheelers, of course, in the Race Room Ranked Championship. Max Pfeiffer, who's a GT3 Pro Champion in the Race Room Ranked Championship. But a couple of other ones are those that are a bit further down. Uh, Markovic for Dury Sports, incredibly fast. Uh, surprised seeing down 24th. Same as the person directly above him, Kirill Antonov, uh, of course, for Lars, but Rosneft in the Cooper Sim Racing Series was incredibly fast, was battling for the top three uh, uh, in the championship. Rasmus Salo, who's uh, one of the most experienced drivers on the grid. I mean, literally, I'm just reading out the grid here. Uh, <laughs> just possible talent to move forward. But it, it, it's, seriously, it's how competitive it is. Uh, we're looking towards the middle of that grid as well. Always the pre-qualifying, and I always just want to, you know, give a little bit of... Just take a little pinch of salt with this entry list, of course, because yes, this is how fast they've pre-qualified, and yes, you've obviously had to put a good lap in to be able to get into the top 32 in the first place. However, that's not necessarily going to translate word for word into that qualifying session. I would fully expect the likes of Ben Spanky, Florian Hasler, of course, a veteran on race room, David Naj, who uh, after joining Mira Esports, that was one of, I wouldn't say a redemption story, but that was definitely one of the sort of like late bloomer stories uh, in our 2019 season, where all of a sudden alongside Gogo Baldi, he came into the world of his own, went from midfield runner to race winner. Axel Vermeulen as well, someone to keep an eye on. Martin Barner can always spring a surprise, a mirror esports teammate of David Naj. Uh, I will say Kirill Antonov as well, of course, got a race win uh, in that 2019 season. The Russian's always been in and around the EWTCR, even from its earliest points. So always watch out for him in regards to points finishes. Uh, and Max Pfeiffer as well, Lewis. I think this is one driver that we definitely want to pick up on, uh, yeah. driving for Dirt Esports. And this is sort of case in point to what I was saying earlier. Yes, he pre-qualified 29th, but actually we're expecting him to, at the very least, be in the top 10 conversation, if not battling for those podiums. Yeah, and that's the thing is that uh, it doesn't matter where you qualify into it. Once you're qualified, you're 
into it. Yeah, you're, you're a part of the race. It's all zero. This isn't going to be where you're starting the race. You get to do the qualifying session uh, to move yourself into, uh, into the race. So uh, effectively, it is all zero. By the way, the qualifying session uh, is underway. We are getting our first laps in of the season. And hopefully we'll be able to see that in just a moment. The uh, season that we're looking at, of course, this shootout going from the Nürburgring where we're presently at today with the fast chicane. I know that this uh, this B-roll is a bit uh, misleading on that one, but it is the fast chicane going through there. Perfect timing for that, by the way. Hungaroring and then Mosan Aragon. That's a bit of a left field choice. Love it, though. Love, Love Aragon. Aragon. Great oh, it's one of, uh, honestly, it's one of the most underrated Spanish tracks. I think a lot of people, when they think of, of Spanish uh, like Grand Prix tracks or just tracks in general, you think to your Valencia street circuits because it wasn't that great or Barcelona because it's boring. And then sitting in the middle of all of this is Motorland Aragon, which for me is one of the best circuits in Europe. It's got such great undulation and elevation and great overtaking opportunities. Trust me, once we hit 30th of November, you're going to love it. But hopefully we're all going to love and enjoy this qualifying session. And of course, uh, touching back to what we were saying earlier, um, I'll just do a quick check of the stream schedule as well. Of course, qualification, race one, race two with a top 10 reverse grid. Easy peasy, right? We all got that. Lovely, lovely. So let's talk about qualification. Private session, Lewis. Now, I don't know about you, but I think this, this might go down from the driver's perspective and from an audience perspective as a little bit of a controversial choice because around this 5.1 kilometer circuit you'd imagine that there is enough room as i say like you see private qualification in macau the nordschleifer but the nurburgring's the nurburgring it's a wide circuit there's plenty of opportunities to move out the way to make sure that you're not impeding your fellow drivers and yet also the fellow drivers are what make a qualification so interesting you've got to navigate your way through the traffic set up that perfect lap uh, but the private qualification does have its benefits of course every single driver will know that it's just them in their own little world and ultimately that in a sense uh, ensures maximum competitive integrity between all of these 32. Yeah, uh, I actually hate private qualifying. Uh, <laughs> I, I always hate it because genuinely for the most racing driver of reasons you don't have an excuse. You have absolutely no excuses not to get the lap in. And that is pressure, which is... When you're in an open... When it's just an open session with loads of cars flying past, you're kind of like, well, you know, maybe I can pick up slipstream, whatever. And if I don't pick up slipstream, but that'll be the reason I don't get a pole, obviously. That's just how it goes. Uh, whereas, realistically speaking, uh, as you can see, there are cars in the background there. Realistically speaking, in a, in a session like this, you just don't have uh, any of those excuses. Did see that the time coming into this, by the way, was a 2 minute 1.7 uh, from Plischke. I can see at the moment in qualifying it's a 202.1 uh, from Gianmarco Verdici which is presently the provisional pole time. Well, the swimming pool is looking pretty enticing. So let's dive into this qualification session and, and see how these drivers react to their first competitive EWTCR action in a year and a half. It has been a long time away, but finally we are home. Uh, and home looks a lot like an Audi motorhome at the moment, Lewis, because there are a lot of them on track. Certainly the car of choice. We will see uh, VOP patches or balance of power patches certainly uh, introduced to these cars probably after the shooting out season going into the 2023 season but you've got to work with what you've got and a lot of folks feel that the Audi is the way to go which makes sense you know it's uh, it's a car that works around this track I kind of understand why you want to go there I'd almost lean myself a little bit more towards the uh, towards the Elantra mostly because I really like how it looks but looks don't mean anything uh, when you're going for a fast lap time you just need to go fast and like you say at the moment uh, Audi domination on that but is that just qualifying? Is that just outright speed? Or are we going to see uh, a little bit more of an effect in the race, maybe uh, wearing through or overheating their tyres uh, a touch more? That could be a slight problem. We're on board with Jean-Marc over each at the moment. Provisional pole time as we just come through fast on up towards Ad Van Bogen and towards the, uh, the NGK chicane. I'm just going to break that out of time. Uh, this is wrong. Uh, I know the, I know the cool names around here have, have changed like a thousand times, but it's fine. You can see the fast chicane throws it in. This is going to be big on track events. Expect a few slowdowns through the race. Marco Fiducci currently on provisional pole looking to extend that margin and trust me every hundredth really does matter here as you can see the top 20 barely covered by three and a half tenths Fiducci looks like provisional pole position is going to be his uh, of course no surprise to see a Hungarian in the top three either Martin Barna that's an excellent qualifier ahead of Petr Plischka the man for me that we got to watch out for though Lewis is the Israeli Yuval Rosen one of the newer names here to the championship but only a hundredth off 
Gianmarco Fiducci. That is an excellent effort. And ahead of the likes of Pfeiffer, Banky, and of course, Jack Heathley, who was absolutely distraught the other day, uh, losing out the E1 championship. It was a bit yeah. of a long shot for him. But of course, running out of fuel at a crucial stage of the race before his pit stop, he is an emotional driver. He is a driver who really wears his heart on his sleeve. Multiple times race winner as well, of course. We know that we're going to see passion from him uh, halfway down the hot halfway down the top 10 yeah also he might be a little bit disappointed with uh, with his pace around here because let's be honest and obviously it's it's on the slightly bigger uh, lap but he is uh, he's a Nordsch life for specialist and that kind of gives yeah. you a little bit of a boost around the Grand Prix because you're kind of like well I mean it should go quite well uh, around here it's only a few less corners uh, alas to have not qualified quite as well as he'd want to I mean it is what it is great lap time from Gianmarco Vidici like you said with Rosen alongside slightly for, for, for some of the esports drivers slightly unknown quantity for some of the other drivers like Safifer and whatnot might actually be used to racing with Rosen on the uh, just on the ranked competition system uh, that we've mm. got here in race room. He's one of those that are quite up there. Although anyone who did watch the race room ranked championship a few weeks ago will note one major thing. Always had the pace for the top five. Spent the entire season outside the top ten. Never finished, I think for the first three races, didn't even finish inside the top 20 uh, and finished, I think, 11th in the penultimate race, or in the final race of the season. Inconsistency there is, is, is quite high. And if this, if there is a championship where you can't be inconsistent, it's definitely uh, the shootouts here in this one. Yeah, this sounds harrowingly like my own sim racing career, as no short comment. and as no bittersweet comment. as that was, most certainly. Uh, but we certainly hope for the best for him. Of course, being on the front row. It, Yes, shenanigans can go on behind, but you've also got a clean road in front of you. And I'm sure he, more than others, given his recent track record, will be thinking, this is the biggest championship that I've taken part in thus far. Let's make sure that it counts because, yeah, there is only six races. That means that there is a total of, what was it, barely doing quick maths oh the return it's here 150 points total maximum that's very that good you can extract i know it's like listen i it's been a while it's been a while but i'm back on form 150 points maximum that you can extract from this so realistically you're looking at 75 points maybe to 100 points that's the sort of area where you're going to be safe through to the top 20 uh, and getting to that threshold is almost like the 40 point mark in the premier league isn't it where you've got to get there first and then maybe you can relax a little bit. But these early races are crucially important. Yeah, especially this one. First race of the season. I think they're all in the uh, grid at the moment, getting ready to go racing. Gianmarco Verducci, James, starting this one from pole. Ahead of Rosen, we've got Barna and Plischke, plenty of regular names. You can see they go right round the corner, but as the red lights flash out into green, Ooh. we are racing, and it looks like a brutally slow start from this camera angle. I think a little bit deceiving for Ducci, as we see the timing tower does appear to have the advantage going into the Yokohama S first corner here. We've got Barna competitive up against Rosen, who takes the inside line. Bit of door banging, bit of hate exchanged, but all all things said, considering this first corner in its history in this championship, that's a pretty clean getaway, Lewis. Yeah, Ooh. well, there you go. You had to say it, didn't you? I think that might have been Hujek that was getting slightly sideways on the inside and his Elantra uh, and a few getting sent out. Three wide coming through the exit of the Mercedes Arena section, focused on Ilya Drovasekov, who's been pushed out a little bit by Kirill Antonov and Luciano Vitfoot. It's turning into crazy town. Black Friday is not for a week, lads. Let's settle down and get yourself some good prices on decent positions early. Dravosikov, of course, the Swiss battling away here with Antonov and Luciano Vitvot, who's definitely one of the more aggressive drivers from the history of this championship, already losing a little bit of toe here. Leandro Verlowick on board with P13. Dravosikov further up ahead as he moves through Turn 7 and up towards the Michael Schumacher S. Gianmarco Fiducci, our race leader still, and trying to gap Rosen early doors. A lot of interest here from Varner as we head through the S itself. Plischke keeping in close pursuit towards Turns 10, turns 11 and the end of the lap. Yes, indeed. Gianmarco Vidicci, though, having a, a great start. Obviously, anyone who saw it on the race start there, uh, we had Ottaviani with a false start, a jump start. That's returned his way into pit lane. He's down the order with 22nd, of course, one of the teammates uh, of this man here, Gianmarco Vidicci, Rosen, Barna, Pliska, and Pfeiffer, who uh, the young man, I suspect, will get quite aggressive in the near future. Obviously, uh, one of those drivers that's in those Hondas, the second of the Hondas. And to be fair, inside that top 10, it's looking a little bit more uh, a little bit more colorful when it comes to the badges that we've got in there now 
uh, it, isn't it just plenty of different countries to, to, to pick your way through? Geography fans rejoice. Uh, don't rejoice if you're a Jack Heathley fan, unfortunately. We covered those who've had a great start. Heathley down to 15th, made that 17th now, being bullied in and amongst the mid pack of the entire field. As someone goes out into the barrier there, not entirely sure who that is. Might very well be Venieri there, who's down to 30 versus Otto Biani serves that drive through penalty inside move Whoa. here from Martin Barner on Yuval Rosen, and that is a very clinical move up to P2. That was a big set down the inside of the first corner. I mean, he, were, he meant that one, didn't he? <laughs> Did Martin Barnamir at eSports. Moving up into second position, keeping an eye on the race. We're getting pushed over. Just a touch on the rear end, heading into the second part of the Mercedes Arena section as they exit that, just almost rolling over that rear end. You'd, you'd suspect it. You'd know it's coming. Uh, you know, being a touring car driver, you always sat there being like, I'm ready uh, for it to come from the rear end, for there to be someone rolling over. Pliska looking straight down the inside uh, of Rosen right now. But with that look, he might opened up into the hairpin because you can see in the mirror Pfeiffer well he's not going to wait too much longer yeah and Rosen this is where you've got to question the mentals of course you've lost a position you've already lost a bit of touch here to Barna who is actually a multiple times race winner himself but all of those race wins have come from sprints the second race the or the third race the reverse grid whatever era of EWTCR you were looking at and Rosen's just got to settle down here uh, as even if he does lose a couple more positions there'll still be good points in the bank you can't just be throwing it all away for podium glory Plushka and Pfeiffer maybe a little bit more eager on that front they can see Rosen struggling just a little bit maybe with a bit of tire overheating almost running into the back of Rosen there is the Italian Peter Pliska as he'll have this entire run down through Advan Bogan turn 12 this sweeping curve up towards the fast NG Ch NGK chicane but Lewis with this fast version of the chicane in effect going to be a lot more difficult to find Musu here yeah, it removes really that you know, the chicane as the overtaking opportunity, but it does open up the opportunity into the uh, into the final hairpin at Coca Cola. It kind of with that fast exit, you can get them on the wrong line. You can push them uh, into the point where they're going to make a mistake, and that's what opens up the opportunity as opposed to the slow chicane, where sometimes that move into the final uh, corner doesn't really work. You can see the defensive line being taken there by Plischka because straight to the outside, Pfeiffer, is he going to send it on the brakes whilst the race lead's getting pretty tight? Gianmarco Vinicius hanging on to it. Pfeiffer's going straight around the outside to take over fourth. They'll have the inside for the second part, or rather the first part of the Mercedes Arena section. Up in his racing, and that is exactly what we love about this championship, as long as there is some respect in there, and plenty of respect here, given that Petr Plischke tries to hold on around the outside of this exit to the Mercedes Arena, not going to happen. Max Pfeiffer up to fourth, Ben Spanky watching, close pursuit there in P6, we've got Hujek, Mackenberg, Vermeulen, and Antonov rounding out the top ten, and worth mentioning that top ten once again, Lewis, of course, the top ten reversed, but race two is going to be another 25 minutes on the clock, and Antonov has plenty of previous with podium finishes in those circumstances. Yeah, points uh, are for the top 15, of course. 11th through 15th, though, I don't want any of those points. I want the top 10 because not only have you got the points, you're absolutely right. You've got that reverse grid. That is critical uh, for, uh, you know, for, for you getting a decent points haul. You know, if you're starting out towards the back end of the top 10, that's OK because you're in that, that draw. I want to be like 8th or 9th from towards the back end. I want to be where Mackenberg, uh, Marvin Mackenberg, because there are two on the grid, uh, and then for Malin are. At the moment, Antonov's under a bit of pressure from Luciano Vitfoot, from Dobrosekov, from uh, Vela as well. It, it's a little bit of pressure uh, on his shoulders coming from the rear end. You can see that cut. And you know that, it, sure, there's 19 minutes left in this race. It's probably not going to go for anything now. But in that 90 minutes, you're going to have a, a fair amount of attacking coming from the rear. Of course, we'll have a customary mod to, to the various folks who are still scoring points, but not in that top 10. Vitvot, uh, Dravosakov, Verla, Guibert, and Manuel Gomez. Of course, previous race winner many, many moons ago now. Five years ago, this championship started as the EWTCC, as Petar Pliska there looks to have gotten back ahead of Max Pfeiffer. You can see the two of them going side by side here behind Varna and Paducci. Paducci himself under pressure from Varna. Lovely sweeping camera angle here from our helicopter as into the first corner. Paducci was not going to fight that. Varna covering off the outside line as well. Beautiful work here. And actually, them two fighting 
fighting has reinvited Rose and almost a bit of a second wind here, especially since Plishka and Pfeiffer getting into combat behind. Here's Ben's Banky now, one of the most successful drivers in this championship's history. Countless wins underneath him, countless podiums underneath him, but all of those countless successes are not going to earn him P5 yet. Yeah, you've got to remember with Banky is that his experience it almost knows no bounds, but in this occasion, he's going to have to fend off Hujek uh, coming down towards uh, the, 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 the couple of corners. I don't really want to call it a chicane, but Valvoline and Ford, it's not really a chicane, but it's almost there. One lead straight into the other before they get into the hairpin. But Banky had to fend off Hujek there a little bit because he's too busy focusing forward. And that's the thing, when you're in a train like this, you know that if you go for a move on the car ahead and it doesn't pay off, you are going to be under attack. You've got to play that a few corners ahead. 17 and a half minutes left of this race to run, not yet at the halfway point, and that's all the better from my mindset, given that we've got plenty more action to enjoy. Maybe it will be sparked by Luciano Vitvogt, uh, not popular amongst the drivers at the tail end of 2020. Let me say that much. Certainly at the heart of a lot of incidents, many of them his fault, but it's a long time since then and perhaps the tempered head or rather the temperous head has become tempered in that time through Advan Bogen once again up towards the NGK chicane slipping into the slipstream of Kirill Antonov but we call this a DRS train in Formula Lewis but it's more of just a regular slipstream train not that much of an advantage when it comes to the overall speed deficit that you can gain over those in front especially with so many cars ahead of you so many are going to be benefiting yeah mostly uh like i say it's, it's the front two or three in a train where you might see those switches those in the mid pack the only reason why you see switches between them is courtesy of mistakes late on uh, or potentially getting involved in their mirrors you saw that from vitford just uh, ahead uh having a, a bit of an issue there it might have been antonov rather uh, getting into it a little bit this is the train that's just dropped off the rear end of that top 12 uh, it's leandro vela ahead of gomez ahead of montgomery uh, who I didn't realise recently he has picked up a virtual driver's by TX3 uh, badge to his name. There is a Leandro Vela, Arnaz competition. Uh, hopefully we get to see some custom livery, by the way, because Arnaz competition livery is absolutely... Oh, it's uh, gorgeous. Fan fantastic. They're sending me... Uh, not, not, not that I can pay the phone. Uh, they're sending me some, uh, <laughs> some jerseys, some t-shirts and whatnot, so if any other team out there wants to do so, do them my way. <laughs> We'll, we'll show them off on broadcast and we do have you Lewis of course not just for the shootouts but for the full season ahead so full steam ahead to all the merch drops uh, I am available too yeah. I'm ready to sell out and I'm ready to, <laughs> to, 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 to provide the plug so to speak uh, James Montgomery worth mentioning of course uh, one of those fanciful flags where, are, where is he from you might ask well he's from Jersey of course from the he is certainly someone who's going to be quite eager. His uh, ears are, are a little, they're, they're pricked up here as Jack Juan Manuel Gomez has threatened to lose out to P15, but uh, as it stands, still in that final point paying position. Jean Marco Fiducci, meanwhile, now he's lost the lead. This much has been clear for a couple of laps. Martin Barner has not been able to break away, however. And as we do hit that 15 point mark, Lewis, something that we have to consider heading into the final 10 minutes is the state of tire wear. Some of these drivers do work their tires a little harder than the rest and being out ahead in front you are going to be working your tires naturally harder than those behind you can stick into the slipstream at moments like this on the home straight going into the braking zones uh, so Martin Barner he's got a race to manage here Gianmarco Fiducci plenty of different plays going on in his head as to how he can recapture that yeah but the thing with Fiducci is that he's uh, I mean he's grown a lot in the last uh 12, 12 to 18 months. I mean, he's really grown a lot. The, the mentality uh, of strength, like, he'll be sat there being like, I'm going to go for this win. Of course I am. I'm sat in second at the moment. I've got the race lead ahead of me. But Fiducci from two years ago might have gone for it, ignoring everything else. Yes. Whereas right now, he will go for it being like, but if I don't get it, I'm still second. Not bad. Not a bad way to start the season. And that's kind of like, that's the mentality that you see. And that's the mentality that you need in some, in a, in a, in a what is effectively, like I say, you've got to treat it like a season. In a season as short as this, you have to treat, uh, treat it as, as, as one big race. And that winning right now almost means nothing. It does not guarantee you a place to move through. It doesn't, whereas the points for second, rather than, you know, trying to risk it to get 25 points and then throwing it all away, bank the 20. You know, like, like bank that and just be like, look, I'll go for it a little bit. And that's the driver that Fiducci is now. I love to see it. 
Yeah, we're storyboarding, aren't we? This isn't the full script. This isn't what is going to be translated onto film that's going to be shown to the masses. This is the early stages. We are still forming the story of our championship here. And if you want to be a part of the story, then you've got to give us a convincing case. That convincing case comes through points, finishes, consistently high points, finishes, and not race wins because... Uh, Although this is EWTCR branded, this is not an official season. This is merely a pre-qualifying championship, so to speak. So to get P2 to lock down an, an early load of points, to get to that 7,500 point mark, Gianmarco Fiducci knows that's all he's got to do at this point. Although he is a racing driver, I imagine that yeah. the temptation of first place will still very much play off his mind as he demonstrates by pushing Barn around the final corner. 12 and a half minutes left now, and, and maybe he will line something up for the Yokohama S here. Tucked up into the slipstream quite nicely. Barno looks to be running a little bit of, of skinnier rear wing. A little peek out from Fiducci, but perhaps waiting until the final five minutes before he lands his track. Oh yeah, there'll definitely be a couple of tents. Also, you know, as much as you're a racing driver and you're sat there being like, oh, I'll take second position, you know the guy behind is going to be potentially in, in the same boat thinking oh no I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab that position I'm gonna grab it's you're all racing drivers at the end of the day that's how it's gonna go the one that I'd really look at in there is fifth place is Pfeiffer because I know that he can get a bit elbows out towards the end of races and as we head into this this final half of this final chapter of the first race uh, of the season we do have a couple of drivers that will desperate be desperate to work their way forward I want to start speaking though trying to not be too brutal but of some of the drivers that are disappointing a little bit at the moment because there are a few uh, on this grid where you kind of like you'd expect them to be further as uh, Joubert uh, is, is one of those now as far as down towards the back of the grid with Gomez mm. as well have they potentially breached the instant points we'll discuss that in a moment uh, mm. but a few drivers on that Dixon who's in 21st Harsa who's now dropped down to 23rd Sebastian Ray in 24th Jack Keithley and Alessandro Ottaviani 29th and 30th and that's before you, there's one big name uh, in all of that where I'm sat there being like wait what 14th place David Nosh one of the fastest drivers in front wheel drive competition on the platform 14th place he's not a good start to the season Methinks there has been a few scuffles that oh, yes. we've managed to to I mean because the action has been quite enthralling up front that we've managed to to avoid checking out here as ooh, look at Mackenberg and look at Montgomery though of course this is speak of the devil and they shall arrive Montgomery was 15th and then fell down to 20th and he's been bouncing in and around and has somehow come through the melee still in the points hunt here is the aforementioned David Naj looking to the outside of Leandro oh not Leandro Berla, sorry there was a bit of oh it is Leandro Berla how strange must be some timing issues of course the Brazilian is uh, dialing in from quite far away as he also had a little bit of an in swinger there to the final corner cutting off the nose of David Naj but there is no slipstream for Leandro Berla to enjoy here and David Naj will be hopefully for his sake reaping the benefits that it doesn't seem to be closing whatsoever in fact it seems like Marga Markovic here Matija Markovic I should say more likely to overtake but look around the outside here goes James Montgomery looking for a lovely bit of capitulation oh my goodness me that's how you tackle the Yoko Homer S with multiple cars in front of you take that wider line he benefits he's up to 60. And yes, indeed. There is also a switch a bit further up. There is Montgomery, because I'm pretty sure Pliska was trying something on Rosen. It might have made it a two-horse uh, race in the front, but look at that send from Nod. Oh, my goodness. They are getting very much elbows out in this battle. And looking further up, by the way, there are a couple of positions are changing, but we keep our eye here. This is the final points paying position. So, I mean, goodness me, it's better to start your season off with one or two points rather than nothing at all. Matija Markovic, P14, Leandro Verla, 30th. Montgomery now up into the points. David Nage, that aggressiveness has paid against him. He's paid out down to 16, still in the points hunt, but time running out. Less than 10 minutes left. And still, we got the likes of uh, the other Mackenberg and the other Verla, Erasmus Salo. Bo Dixon, Schmidt in there as well. Plenty of cars who will be more than happy to take these lower points paying positions away should any more drama unfold. It's a train all the way back to 27 for the final three points paying positions. That is mad. It's just, it is going to get a very observed. And of course, for anyone outside of the top 10, you're fighting for your grid position in the next race. You're fighting for where you want to start that next race. 
it's going to get very, very, uh, very much elbows out, very much fisty cuffs over the final eight and a bit minutes left of this race. You can see the top two, though, have cleared off. Barna and Fiducci now clear by 1.5 seconds ahead of Yuval Rosen because of a move that Pliska attempted uh, a little while ago. It was unsuccessful, and it's just dragged them right off of that lead battle. Oh, he goes very defensive, doesn't he, into the Yokohama S. It's a long breaking zone, and it's all about being brave on the brakes. Maybe going a little earlier will serve you better up the hill, but no undercut as of yet for Petr Pliska, who tries to hold it around the outside here into the Mercedes Arena. Rubbing is racing once again. Paint exchange to the doors. You can almost wave through to your fellow driver, but for the moment, Rosen stays ahead. I've been really impressed with how he has driven this thus far. He's been under the posh of art, he's been able to catch up to the likes of Fiducci and Barna at other times, sure. But Peter Pliska is an experienced runner in these types of cars. He's an experienced runner in race room overall. And if there was a favorite for the podium from this point on, it would possibly be Pliska, maybe even Pfeiffer behind. Rosen is the underdog, despite his positional advantage. Yeah, he's doing a great job to deal with the pressure on his shoulders, but you kind of get the feeling that sometimes it's just not really going to work one way, then back the other, then back the other once again from Pliska. He's trying to get the up and under on the exit of the head, and he's just going to get slightly alongside, pushing on the exit. But obviously, you're not going to get an overlap from there on the run up the hill through the Schumacher S. But you've got to remember again, Fife. I've got, I've got to say, Fife has been genius behind. He's been letting them get on with it because he's like, these two are definitely going to take each other out if they keep doing this. Once again, Pliska's close to going for a move, but Rosen is really, really feeling that pressure. Definitely feels like one of the drivers, again, I, I, <laughs> I hearken to my own short sim racing career, but I get it. I get that you're fast on, on single lap pace, but that does pay you back in the race. I would get the impression out of all of these drivers that he might be one of the first to suffer with tyre wear. Pfeiffer, Plischke, they've been pretty good on their tyres. Banky certainly a master of it. He knows when to push, and you can tell when he's had a hard run race because he is sliding all over the place. That's not something you usually see from the Slovakian around the final corner. Rosen still holds third place, but for how much longer? Immediately goes defensive much earlier than what we saw the previous lap round. It might be a case of just taking the points that you can get at this stage. Pliska looking way better. Again, weaving around, choosing the outside line. Ultimately, Rosen, I think, playing this perfectly, Lewis, going right down the center, making his opponent choose which way to go. And Pliska chooses wrong once again. I speak about it every single time when I see this style of defense. I love it because it's proactive. It's he's uh, again Rosen's the one that's making the choice is going proactively to the inside and being like look if you want to pass uh, go around me like I mean, I'll take this part of the road you can use the rest of it and I love it it's working so well because he's being predictable he's being wise this time though it might not work coming up towards uh, Valvoline and Ford Plisch goes to the inside got rid of Harvey, slams the throttle down gets it down onto the brakes hangs down the anchors and just about saves it great catch he might lose out to Banky as well but I mean he was going going for it there he might have got he might feel he got a bit pinched onto that curb but it was a great bit of racing I wouldn't say there's not there's not much wrong that Rosen did there either no, though simply know. taking his line it was a very aggressive very opportunistic move from Plischke it hasn't paid off as you say great save uh, uh, easier in these cars of course than something with a rear wheel drive configuration but he has lost out here not massively but down to six it's less points than he had just 60 seconds ago speaking of seconds well there's five minutes 60 times five left on the clock of course we run to the line and then we are on to that final lap oh actually no I, I forget isn't it it's it's once the checker flag flies that is the final lap yeah so it's, it's as simple as that. You've got to run to the timer, not necessarily to the timer plus one. Ben Spanky here now. He's already gained one position. And you can tell how experienced he is. He's not trying to fight Plischka at this stage. He never was because he's already capitalized on one mistake. And now he's waiting to see whether Pfeiffer is going to trip over himself, much as Plischka did. Yeah, indeed. Like I said, there's, there's still a lot of drama going to happen in this battle. There's still plenty of time for it uh, in the form of three laps. Banky sat there and... Uh, waiting behind Pfeiffer. He'll probably work with a fair amount in this. Pfeiffer, though, looking to take over third position. It's the highest spot they can go for. Pliska's trying to attack uh, Banky as well. So whilst Pfeiffer goes to the outside, the two Hondas trying to get around the outside of the first corner. The up and under could potentially work from Pfeiffer here. But once again, Rosen is just playing his cards so well right now to hang on to that third. 
And I love how we, in inverted commas, missed the apex there as well. That's just incredibly smart driving because whilst you're going a little bit wider, the opponent who's on the outside can't move in. He can't just turn into you because he's going to face effectively a moving bollard there. Excellent work from Rosen showing wonderful racecraft to hold on to third for the moment being of course 333 left now the time whittling away at a rate of knots Pfeiffer he's tried one uh, concoction of a move here what does he have down into this hairpin where he's a little bit too far behind to try much and really at this stage Lewis is it worth going for something risky because you have got points locked in you're in no man's land yes you're in a battle with four but there are cars too far behind, there are cars too far ahead. Surely at this point, get those points on the board. Yeah, honestly, mate, I'm, uh, I'm a touring car driver, we all know that, uh, and, uh, but I'm not, uh, I'm not as, as door bangy as some. Uh, mm -hmm. As we can see, once again, a move to the inside from Fife for trying to find his way through. That's, to be honest, what Fife is doing there is exactly what I would do. I would constantly look, but at the moment, not really go for anything, right? Just trying to get them to make a mistake because there's no risk in that. Right? If they make a mistake, you gain the position, you walk your way through, fair enough. But I'm in the boat that you were talking about there of I'd, I'd almost lock in the points that I've got. I'd, own, I'd just keep looking and trying to get that mistake. But until that point, it's like, I don't really care. Uh, fourth, fourth is great, great. And yeah, sure, it's a podium and whatnot. But you've got to think of the points here. Bit of an issue, uh, I think, from Hujek on uh, his internet connection because he's dropped back there and Marvin Mackenberg was caught out coming into the NGK game. It, it's what happens in it's in racing sometimes they are the various technical issues that we have here in the virtual world who jack of course has benefited he's effectively broken the slipstream from behind and meanwhile he's laughing as in his rearview mirrors it all goes to hell lovely dive wow. lovely send from vermalen but sends it a little too deep and now here's vitboat as well getting involved along with the likes of antonov watching brief luciano vitboat here currently in p10 capitalizing uh, on the inside the russian antonov down the inside to uh, switch to the outside line but basically just drags his car alongside and over his opponent there. Does really well to hold on to position. Bifo up to ninth, but Malin 10th. Antonov down to 11th. And Mackenberg remains in 8th. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I was going to say they're all remaining single file, but they certainly aren't doing, they're doing the exact opposite of that. They're all over the place when it comes to this. This is back up to the race lead then. Uh, I believe the Panama lap of the race. You see that though in the background, because I think Banky and Pliska were defending. Big yeah. defense from, uh, from Banky uh, oh. coming down into the hairpin, and Pliska's still not able to do it. But Hujek, I mean, he is closing in his Hujek right now. He is almost knocking at the door of jumping into this fight. And will he wait around? I think not. And we talk about Rosen, he's fourth. Max Pfeiffer has passed him, so Rosen has lost his podium position whilst we were looking down at the lower point scoring positions. A major change, Rosen, his tyres continuing to scream, Banky waiting for that moment to strike, but perhaps it's a little too late here, especially with Pliska and Hujek in pursuit. We will have one final lap of this race. Barner and Fiducci, are they just going to shake hands and go across the line and then just pick up the points that they know will be super good? Well, from that camera angle, no, they are not. John Marco Fiducci pushing Barner around and we were waiting, weren't we, for this potential strike from John Marco Fiducci. He has played the patient game, but is he going to start to think about that race win more and more? Is he going to think, oh, second place, that doesn't sound right. Number one is where John Marco Fiducci should be going defensive is Martin Barner going aggressive is Gianmarco Fiducci around the outside is Gianmarco Fiducci the Italian bumping together through the Yokohama S and that is some aggressive defending from Martin Barner cutting him off on the outside exit of the corner now through the Mercedes Arena Martin Barner remains ahead Fiducci is there any answer on the exit of the Mercedes Arena no not the moment was that his last chance yeah, I'm not sure. I think he's got a couple more opportunities, maybe down into the hairpin, maybe up into the uh, up into the NGK chicane. But realistically, does he need to go for it again? We've spoken about it time and time again. As much as we want to see him go for it right now, he doesn't really need to. There's a bit of racing in the background between Pliska trying to get around the outside of Banky as well. And he's going to send it. He's trying to get all the way around the outside of the left-hander, inside for the right, and he's done it. Super stuff, but is the outside line going to prevail for Banky? Uh, it is not, unfortunately. The track favouring Pliska and all of this favouring Rosen as well. Yes, you've lost the podium, but P4 on debut in this championship. We have seen much worse from folks who have gone on to become world champions in their own right. Back up to the front, Gianmarco Fiducci, his last chance really 
will be a lunge into the final corner. Maybe, maybe there is a chance here, or maybe they're going to go a little bit earlier here into turn 10. Oh, he has launched it into turn 10 side by side. Pushes him off the road, Martin Varner goes. We'll have the inside line into the Vorsteiner Curva. He is going to retake this lead, maybe fearing a little bit of... Uh, Post-race punishment there, John Marco Fiducci. Would the move have been legal? Well, that is to be debated on another day. He's got one last chance to think about now through the NGK chicane. <laughs> He's weaving away, maybe trying to scare Martin Barner into a less optimal line. He takes it pretty well, does the Hungarian. John Marco Fiducci, oh, that's ultra defensive once again from Martin Barner. Fiducci tries to hang it around the outside, but this corner run. does not favor that move whatsoever. Martin Barner picks up another win in his EWTCR career. He wins from Fiducci, Pfeiffer rounding out the podium, Rosen, Blischka, Banki, Hujek, Marvin Mackenberg, Luciano, Vidbot, and Alex uh, Axel Vermeulen rounding out the top 10. Vermeulen, of course, on reverse grid pole position for race number two. Antonov, Dravosikov, Markovic, the other of the Mackenbergs, and Florian Hasser, therefore, rounding out the top 15, your final point scorers. Oh, EWTCR is back, Lewis. I love it. Oh, yeah. Uh, a few retirements as well from that race. You can see the finishing order. Like you said, Barna, uh, Fiducci and Pfeiffer on the first podium of the season. Retirements from Silo, Boris Schmidt, uh, David Noj, James Montgomery, and of course, Gomez and uh, Guibert a bit earlier on in the race. But yeah, what a first race. What drama. A few drivers. I mean, I said before earlier on in the race about Antonov, who was in that 10th spot. He was in that danger zone of being knocked out of it and certainly did so. We'll have to start in the most painful position of the next race from that 11th. The rest of your order scrolling through. What can Keithley do from 22nd as well, knowing how fast he is in these kind of cars? He's going to have, uh, he's got a lot of work to do. Let's put it that way. Yeah, one Manuel Gomez down there as well. You know, I said he had a race win, but he was also quite well known back in the EWTC, the, uh, TCC, I should say, for retiring as well. David Naj, what a disappointing start to the season for him. Uh, a great story for the Mackenbergs, of course, both both Sven and Marvin, both scoring points, whereas the Verlers, Leandro and Lucas, both outside of the points. Will they be able to, to switch fortunes in race two? But I do want to focus back in on Rose and their Lu uh, Lewis. Uh, not getting a podium after qualifying on the front row, but this a much improved performance from what we've seen previously to, yes, lose a little bit of that tire life to ultimately not have the pace to keep up, not just with the front runners, but ultimately Max Pfeiffer, who nipped that podium away from him in the dying stretch. To just get a fourth out the door is, is a fantastic start to his shootout. And, and hopefully we will see that improved form continue into race two. Yeah, so he just needs to keep that uh, that pace up. He's keeping basically in the ballpark of those uh, decent points paying results, and yeah, it, it, it'll come. Time, yeah, time will, yes. will will benefit him on that one. Absolutely fine. You don't need to win this race. You don't need to be on the podium in this race. Fourth place, great points. Keep that mentality and also the strength of speed. But this is going to be a very testing race because, of course, the top 10 reverse. So for the likes of uh, Fiducci and Barna, who have been experienced enough in this, I don't think mentality is going to be much of a problem for them. But for some of those younger drivers or you know, those inexperienced drivers, you know, comparatively to, uh, to Rose and even Vermeulen, you know, fairly young in his, in his sim race. Yeah. And he's been doing it for, for three or four years now. But still, when you're put onto a stage like this with drivers like this, sometimes that reverse grid draw, you're put into a position where you're not, 100% comfortable and yeah I think we're going to see that uh, that plate's part and it's going to be interesting certainly from the experience side of things with Fiducci and Barna because usually for them at least in the history of this championship they've been in and around the bottom of the top 10 move to the front and so now a bit of a role reversal for them are they going to be able to deal with the midfield mayhem because an, even an experienced runner like Jack Keithley for example I mean that was a disaster of a yeah. first race from qualifying halfway down the top 10 to not even getting near the points and okay you could say maybe there was a couple of incidents that went against him but avoiding incidents is usually better than benefiting uh from incidents in the sense of you'd rather i don't know go off onto the gravel and work your way back onto track and maybe lose one or two positions and drive straight head first into the middle of an incident as we have seen from a few drivers in the past and ultimately it doesn't just ruin their race it ruins plenty of other races around them you got to think about like what are the ways of guaranteeing your your transfer into the 2023 season, right? Yeah, uh, that's yeah. that's how you got to think about. It. And to be honest, if you want to guarantee yourself that top 10 finishes, just constant top 10 finishes. Don't try and go for everything big, dramatic, and glorious. If 
if you're being completely honest, right, if you think about it from a logical point of view, which is obviously not how anyone approaches anything uh, <laughs> racing-wise, but uh, <laughs> if you really think about it, if you finish in fifth and sixth, fifth and sixth, fifth and sixth, fifth, like for the, for the three rounds that we've got between those two races, yeah, obviously if you... You finish fifth, and you'll start uh, from from sixth in the top ten reverse grid race that we're about to see. Finish in those kind of positions, absolutely fine. You do that all the way through the season. You're as near as makes no difference. Guaranteed a place in the next season. The race is about to start, though. Being a new Nico Hulkenberg is better than being a Nikita Mazepin. Let's put it that way, folks. Sure. 25 minutes on the clock, and we are racing once again then. Vermeulen and Vitvot on the front row this time around. Axel has gone himself a decent getaway, hasn't he? Launched and immediately gapped Vitvot. A bit of weaving here and there, maybe just trying to break an early bit of slipstream. Vitvot was looking down the inside and perhaps half-heartedly gives Vermeulen a scare into turn one. Vermeulen will lead Vitvot. And then there's Marvin Mackenberg as well in the midfield, Fiducci and Barna remain in ninth and 10th. And much as was the case in race one, turn one navigated okay. Turn two, a couple of scares here and there, Whoa. but that was very, very, very aggressive. And I believe that was Martin Barna there who was attempting to overtake both Pfeiffer uh, and Rosen in the same corner, flashing of the lights. I don't know why, mate, you were the one at fault here. Side by side, Whoa. three wide, oh, bit of Constantineering, and uh, there was the threat of a couple of cars being spat out there like that, for example, catches some grass, but Varna, my goodness me, at the, the center of attention here at race two's begin. I think it was actually Gianmarco Vedici who sent a big oh, one down the inside of Pfeiffer in that Honda uh, on the exit of the Mercedes arena section. Yeah, I'm not I'm not about that. That was maybe a little bit too aggressive, although I will say it's very tricky to pick out your braking points, uh, yeah. your braking markers around here. Getting squeezed off just a touch uh, in the background was Rose, and he's being pushed down the order now down to 12th position in one of those blue Audis. So uh, on his march backwards, which is not the direction you want to be going. For Maiden, though, hanging on to a very comfortable lead uh, from Vitford and Mackenberg. And some apologies there, of course. Another shout out to, yes, let's absolutely get some team liveries in there because it would, a Fordzilla livery is much easier to identify uh, than certainly some of these stock liveries, which of course are very beautiful in their own right, but we want to see these esports teams represented to their fullest. Here's Sven Mackenberg. Ooh, a bit of fisticuffs here with one of the Verlers. I would imagine this is, is Lucas Verler who's fallen back and Leandro Verler will stay ahead. And actually, just behind Leandro Verler, shout out to Jack Keithley who's had a monster start from outside the top 10 up to 17th already he can smell points yeah he's doing really well at the moment is Keith Lee and like I said this is the kind of race where you'll see one of two very very differing sides of Keith Lee you'll either see this this side of Keith Lee which is absolutely phenomenal at overtaking every pass is a clean pass but it is ruthless aggression or you might just see pure aggression uh, and it's kind of 50-50 is to see which one uh, which one we get. He's very experienced and that's why he puts on some great moves. He's working his way up the order trying to grab another one. Meanwhile, Rosen uh, looking to, uh, to, to stabilize that drop back that he's had. 12th position now, he's got Markovic ahead, but he's settled now. He's got 12th position on the cards. Harsa behind has gained three positions uh, over the race start is directly on his rear, but can now focus forwards. And by the way, you did get the Verlas the correct way around. So that was good. I mean, oh, I would, there we it go. Was a, it, was a, it was a good wild guess. It is Lucas. <laughs> on the standings. Of course, we've got wonderful overlays here, and I did see a lovely message from chat talking about how how far production has come, and I could not agree more. Like I've been here since the very beginning of these sorts of productions, and it has come a long, long way. But as wonderful as our overlays are, <laughs> Rob is the reason why we're all here. And shout out to Robert Beeson, whether he deserves his due credit. Uh, but we do also not know which Verler it is unless we go on board. Which <laughs> I shout yes. out to. <laughs> Shout out to Chris as well, who's bringing us Captain Coffee, Chris Doe, of course, of course. bringing us the broadcast now. No, no disrespect to is, Rob is, 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 is there anyone else who we've, we've missed out here? I mean, thank you to the uh, audience for being we here. and take the list off, mate. We've opened a can of worms now. This is a problem. <laughs> Vermeulen out a little bit wide, though, coming down to Barcelona. We'll focus on the bit that we can talk about without yes. irritating anyone. That is the <laughs> racing. Vermeulen leading, but under a lot of pressure down the back straight here, or back straight away, I guess, as the Americans would call it. A bit of a curvature in there. Max Pfeiffer in P7, looking up at Petr Pliska. Ben Spanky, solid in P5, and I'm sure that Hujek will be enjoying his stint here in the top five in fourth. He did have a bit of a, a, a worrisome internet-related moment in race one, and he'll be hoping that that doesn't return. But a much closer, packed, 
the like, spear point of the field here. Vermeulen it really has been stressing, it seems. The body language of the car not looking at ease with Luciano Vivo behind, and I'm sure that many a driver will, will certainly <laughs> will certainly sympathize with that particular scenario. But for the moment, Vermeulen conducting himself pretty well as Jack Keithley. You can say the same for him as well. He had a monster start up to 17th. Not much more progress since then, but there are still 20 minutes left to run. And look, this is the EWTCR. You're almost guaranteed free positions at some point in this race. Yeah, that's, uh, that is the truth. I mean, it's a difficult track to pass at, is the Nürburgring. Yeah, the Grand Prix layout, uh, of course, with the fast chicane, is not an easy one to make moves on. When you really think about it, where there are great moves, down into T1, but it's very, very easy to cover off. Down into the hairpin, you'd almost say that out of this section, out of Ford, up towards the, the, the Dunlop hairpin. You'd think, that, I mean, great overtake, but no, but it's not. It's just not mm. a good overtaking opportunity. You, the hairpin is too fast, and you break so late for it. And you can see here, we're, we're still on the brakes now. We're almost mm. halfway through the radius of the corner, but you're breaking into it. You're trail breaking all the way through up towards the stream macros no way you making a pass up into there then you've got mission you only really get an opportunity into there if you've messed up this corner and that's the thing is that everything's at one corner leading into another leading into another leading into another that you don't really get those big big chances what makes a train so hard uh, to make your way up in and it's why if you are leading the best thing you can do defend on the start finish straight and don't make a mistake and then no one can pass you really fascinating look on board uh, looking back from Axel Vermeulen's perspective to Luciano Vidvoet, I think we've got two very different ideologies in regards to setup because Vermeulen very slow out of that hairpin, very indicative of an understeery based setup, whereas Vivo was on the power so much earlier. And, and that does speak to his driving style as well very aggressive, very oversteery. Decent exit from Vermeulen on this occasion once again. And certainly that last corner, certainly a, a lot better for the oversteering setup than what turn seven is and the overall launch has been able to give Vermeulen that extra edge up uh, as we're on board with Marvin Mackenberg the oh my goodness me broken yeah. a little bit late there touching the rear end of Luciano Vitbo you've got to ask consent first there Marvin Mackenberg is into the Mercedes arena Here we go Hujek and Banki and Pliska still watching Greenwood it's a bit of a it's a bit of a stewing moment here Lewis where everyone knows that an overtake is just on the horizon, but who is going to be bold enough slash stupid enough to go for a move that might ultimately damage their own race whilst also benefiting others? Kind of depends on, again, uh, you know, philosophy of not even just setup, but driving style as well. Uh, how much you're, but you personally are burning out the tyres. Because if you don't burn out the tyres very much, right now, I'd be sat there in a the train thinking, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do mm. anything. I mean, it's what we did in those uh, those touring car championships that we used to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that for a lot of the races, I would just sit there and wait, and just wait because, like, I know in the final five minutes, a few other drivers they'll have burnt out their tyres a little bit too much, and you know when you're sat behind someone. If I'm in Vitford's point of view right now, I'm sat there looking at the Formula being like, the, like you said, you're absolutely right. I think he's understood a little bit too much. I think he's got uh, a little bit too much. Uh, yeah, yeah, front end issues and I think he's going to be burning out this is front wheel drive cars you know I think he might be burning out those tyres out a little bit more uh, than I will later on in the race which means that I'll actually go for a move later on in the race because it's like I don't have to rush anything now if you're going to be struggling in the final 5-10 minutes it's much easier and much safer to pass you then and clear off and not try and force anything now where you're going to be threatening me straight away and fun fact for the audience, the driver who was burning out his tyres was me! I kept on falling back do, through the race. Did do a bit. Did I did do a bit. Do a bit. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I didn't use a wheel. That I used a true. controller, which is uh, blasphemous nowadays. Whoa. Oh, I'm trying to blast past! Oh, Max Pfeiffer caught completely unawares there by the launch of Gianmarco Feducci. Aggressive once again, pays off once again. P7 for the Italian. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is a side of Gianmarco that I've not seen for a little while. He's getting feisty out there. I think for the race lead as well, it's getting pretty close. You can see a lot of clashing up the order. The defensive moves being made by those, uh, the likes of Banking, the likes of Feducci trying to hang on to the position that he's just gained, but also Vitfoot was trying to go for it. And you can see there in the distance, it's also going for it once again. The Flying Dutchman looking to take apart for Malin, the race leader. Oh, trying to go around the outside. Got a bit of purchase on the inside here. This is close. Oh, he's got him already. Wowzers. Well, that was that escalated quickly. And Luciano Vitvo, who's been threatening to wrestle away that first place, wow. has done so. Been a late breaking from Vermeulen. Luciano Vitvo isn't going to blink. And that lead is now his. Vermeulen, of course, everyone behind. This is Constantine at the train up. 
on these two fighting. Now what pace does Luciano Vidmot have out front? Is he able to break away or is this merely just a holding of the torch and it's just waiting to switch bearers? Yeah, it's a big train at the moment. You saw Banky going for one uh, in the next one of the bright yellow DHL Aldis. Obviously, the one behind that is Gianmarco Fiducci. Watch out for a couple of passes from him. But the race leader of Luciano Vitt for, for Malin, uh, Marvin Mackenberg, who I'd say Marvin Mackenberg is probably the one inside here that's maybe more of the outlier. Hujek also, because he's a bit more newer in, uh, in that sense. Uh, I've got to say, though, again, just kind of keep it to himself. I'm not really getting involved in the race, Steve. They're not really being threatened too much from behind. It's basically sat there being like, don't worry, lads, I'll take off a, uh, a third place finish in the first round of the championship. That's all right. It will uh, put me nicely up there in the points. But again, third spot at the moment. Would you be risking anything if I'm in that car? No, I'm just sat there. I'm waiting, especially knowing the top two have just switched over. There could be some more feisty action coming. Oh, look at Ooh, the, ooh, I was going to say, look at the state of it. Look at Hujek, who I think might very well have moved out the way because he was worried about, uh, well, yeah, either internet or a slowdown penalty. Looks more like a slowdown penalty on reflection as Mackenberg, oh, sorry, Abanki and Plishka will both benefit. Uh, there goes Fiducci, who's just going to slide back in and remain in P7. Hujek down to six, but Fiducci's going to try and go around the outside here. Nice maneuver, bit of contact. Oh. That is clean for Fiducci. We'll have the inside through the Mercedes Arena. Hujek therefore losing three positions in total. Uh, might have another little bit of a snip here as behind. We see the trio of Pfeiffer, Barner and Antonov going at it. Pushka, of course, uh, enjoying the show from his rear view mirrors. And Antonov ultimately the one who benefits there. He's up to eighth, Pfeiffer ninth, Barner tenth. Yeah, there was a bit of uh, squeezing, got to be said, between, I think, Pfeiffer and Barna coming through. But uh, again, they were just getting a little bit too all over each other. There is Kirill Antonov, who made a three-wide send uh, down the inside of the final part of the arena section to move up into eighth spot. Uh, again, Kirill Antonov is one of those ones where, like, when I first started commentating on Kirill Antonov, he was 16, so he's always 16 now. He's a 16-year-old. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's probably about, like, 19, maybe even 20 now. But uh, no, he's still 16. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sebastian Ray going slow on the inside and then everyone else over each other. <laughs> it's like someone's thrown down an oil slick at turn seven. Maybe they have, who knows? But uh, all of them navigating it uh, and, and somehow remaining in one piece. Sebastian Ray, of course, dropping the most positions out of all that down to P22. Benefits the likes of, and I've seen this nickname in chat, Jersey James. It's Jersey, Jersey James. James. And he's up into P15 Montgomery. So a lovely recovery drive from where he was. Keithley, though, we did see him touching the points briefly. Now back down in P17. Once again behind Leandro Verla. It is a uh, cutthroat outside of the final points paying positions. That's uh, from Mackenberg and Lucas Verla. You've got Guibert as well. And Manuel Gomez from uh, the very back of the field up into points contention as well. So good drives from these folks. Although you can see here from your pictures that Sven Mackenberg just dropping off the back of Keithley briefly. Whoa. Oh, and Keithley, that's a send, isn't it? My goodness me, and Verla <laughs> was not fighting that one. Uh, almost opening the door and saying, oh, you're most welcome in my home. It's all further up. We've got a bit of a house brawl here, as I believe that's probably third. looking fourth. at third position. Yeah, and fourth position. Uh, still Vitboat in front, Vermeulen and Mackenberg completing the podium. It was Hujek and Antonov there, and Pliska and Ducci who were in battle. Pliska holds on to P5, and Hujek holds on to P7. Yeah, take a photograph of this order and uh, use it as reference in 12 minutes' time because I can almost guarantee it ain't going to be it, Chief. This is going to be very different uh, knowing how much these drivers have been battling. And by the way, well, as much as we've given our plaudits to the likes of Keithley who's worked to work the order, give some to Jersey James because he obviously had an issue in the first race uh, and then yeah. got, was, was effectively a retirement, uh, had to start from the back as well has moved up inside that final points per position and now has to deal uh, with Keithley for the next 12 minutes which um, I was I must say having raced Keithley a fair amount I was much happier when I was his teammate in the same car <laughs> endurance race uh, yeah I can imagine and when I, when I threw away their race win <laughs> Ah, good times, good times. Poor Keithley, poor Schaefer. Uh, but yes, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll still hold my hands up. I've still got the trophy downstairs, by the way. I mean, I mean, Keithley was in one of the most controversial moments of the entire yeah. show. You might remember way back at the first ever LAN event, which was held, funnily enough, how about this for full circle, at the Nürburgring uh, during the WTCR round and of course we all remember the days when uh, Mr. Keithley was at odds with Mr. Tim Heineman multiple times race winner and, and that got explosive in person. Oh, yeah. 
kind of scary to be there, to be honest with you. But thankfully, everyone great calmed time. down. Oh, it was, I mean, it was it was drama. It was entertainment. And speaking of, there once again goes Martin Barna on Hujek, who's been struggling here. And oh, my goodness me, that's Keith. That's, oh, sorry. We're looking at a completely different position. So that's further up the road. That's Keith Lee on Montgomery, who's now into 40. So who's dropped down? Who has dropped down? Oh, uh, I mean, oh, Antonov, 28th. Uh, Antonov, Antonov is, there you go. Up there. Uh, Antonov has been, I think, uh, has had an issue. Maybe he's come a cropper of those incident points. You have a certain amount. It's 40 incident points, which you build up through uh, car contacts, track explosions and whatnot. Once you breach that, it's a straight DQ. Might have already breached that. We've seen that a few times Ooh. as Vela's having to deal with a lot of weight on his shoulders right now. Uh, is it going to weigh him down? Yes, maybe, possibly, as Gilbert fancies. Uh, he, he believes in his chances, believe me. More French cheese jokes on the way should Gilbert make it oh, into the full terrible. season. It was. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, this is the thing about my <laughs> current commentary run, is I hardly misspeak. Uh, and when I do, I quite frankly own up to it, as I own up to that joke. It was terrible. Awful. Uh, it was it was awful, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but Gibbon, nevertheless, uh, despite my attempts to uh, urge him on with terrible jokes and terrible puns, remains in the seventeenth. So Macaberg sixteenth. We've got oh, whoa, well, that's a timing glitch, no doubt about that. No. He's down to 29th and he's still there. He's still on track. Juan Manuel Gomez as well. P. Oh, is he still there? I think he's Ooh. just had a. Oh, someone, someone's had an issue in this group. I don't know who it, it is, but it, someone's had a problem. It is Guibert. It's definitely Guibert because he's down in 29th when I yeah. believe he is still ahead of Manuel Gomez. Shenanigans, timing beams. It's, it's crazy out here. Yeah, it's getting a bit uh, a bit crazy. I think the car directly ahead is Nodge still. I think you're absolutely right. Gibbs had a bit of a problem and has moved around in this battle, but I also uh, have no idea what's going on. So we'll just commit to that. There is Bo Dixon uh, involved in this train behind Gomez, behind Nodge, uh, but still ahead of Rasmus Salo, one of... Uh he was one of your drives when you were running Bastvik, wasn't it? I... Uh, Bastvik? Bastvik Enterprise. Well, actually, actually, no, yes, no, 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 I, no, I, you, I, you, I drove oh. as his teammate at, at Bastvik, yes. That was Bastvik, yeah. But he say. also drove for Enterprise, funnily enough. Did he really? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I don't remember. International anyway, Touring Cup, so Touring Cars once again. Yeah. We are just old. That is uh, the thing. Dixon and Gomez oh. switch over and then switch oh. back because Gomez is going to hang on, but... Yes, uh, we are really throwing everyone back to the old days, which I can guarantee, James, no one watching this video, uh, this, this stream, this broadcast, this race, whether they're watching it back, no one has a clue what we're talking about. Uh, I mean, the fact that you're calling me James <laughs> and, and nobody's calling me by, by my eSports alias is, is something of a throwback in of itself. But I've been doing this for 10 years. Can you believe I'm almost... Th I had my 28th birthday less than three weeks ago. Time is terrifying, folks, and it's why you should use every moment uh, optimally. Uh, not like Martin Barner there, who is giving just a little, a little kiss to Piper on the outside, who responds in kind down the inside, heading towards turn seven. Now I believe that, yes, that has been Barner, who's got the better exit and the better line. Makes sense, doesn't it? But Hujek has been let off the hook here in P7, gained a couple of tenths over everyone. Whoa, and so, blah, 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 blah. That's not gonna work. I mean, that's, that's a no. <laughs> that's that is not a good pass uh, from Rosen right over the rear end of Pfeiffer. Uh, that one uh, is a a slam dunk uh, penalty. To be honest, if there is one post race. I mean, I, I mean, I, I could, I could say, oh, it's not for me to decide. It's for, it's for the stewards to decide, and then ultimately I make an opinion <laughs> myself. But I'm just going to go ahead and make an opinion anyway. Sure. I don't know. It's difficult to say. I, he's going to lose out to Pfeiffer once again here on exit uh, through uh, Bogdan, and once again, I, I mean, he's going to have the inside. Oh, I don't like the look of this, Lewis. Oh, oh, I really don't like. Oh, yeah. you know what? I love the look of that though. Very cool. Oh, is he going to get punished as well? Oh, you cheeky so and so off the road onto the grass <laughs> oh florian hassa oh and that's an aggressive move again they're looking to bully remote send down the order matia markovic almost got p11 as well he is going to get p11 through coca-cola uh, but there's a couple of eyebrow raising moments there a bit of spot moments there as i like to call them the eyebrow raise i am might get away with that, might not get away with it. Either way, Rosen's got to keep his head. Here's Dravosikov as well, uh, breaking in time into the first corner. And Rosen, he's ultimately lost a couple of positions out of that, unfortunately. Hasser up into 10. 
yeah, we'll treat this as a learning experience from Rosen, which is don't make a silly move on a Dur Esports driver when you've got two other Dur Esports drivers directly behind you because <laughs> it'll come back to haunt you. And it certainly did on that occasion. Pfeiffer got back through, Harsa got back through, Markovic got through as well. All three of them wasting no time. I, and that's how it goes, though. Once, you know, as, as a team, you think, you don't get to pass my teammate like that. Boom! Get straight, and you're just ruthless. You're like, no, you're. We're, we're getting. We're all going to steamroll you right now, uh, and it worked uh, brilliantly in that case. We've still got uh, what five and a bit minutes left this race. That should be by. because of where they are. It should be four laps. Uh, but again, never trust the contact maths. So uh, it should be four laps. I'm more than happy to share opinions, Lewis. Uh, when it comes to trying to predict how many laps there are left. No. Not going to touch that with a 10-foot barge pole, quite frankly. Uh, but something which can be touched with a 10-foot 10 10 foot barge pole uh, is Vitvote's lead. He has not broken away from Vermeulen. Very similar story to race number one, where we saw Fuducci shadowing Barna. We still got Vermeulen in touch. We still got Mackenberg, Banky, Fuducci, and Plischka in touch. Then you've got that separation back to Hujek in seven so we're looking at a, a six horse race here but once again those questions coming into the mind you're up here because of the reverse grid what an excellent opportunity to score above 15 points to add that to your total a bit of a wide moment there for jean marco Bellucci might lose out to peta Pliska here but surely just worth banking the points now than going out in a blaze of glory Make a banky banking it pun. Then, oh, like, I teased it. See, I teased missed, it. Missed, Again. missed opportunity. But yeah, wait, I, wait I, for I the 2023 season. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, what what has happened is 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 that because of that Brie pun, I'm now just always expecting a pun, which is like Good. it's it's the Good. evil in itself because now I'm making the puns, being like Good. here comes a pun, and I'm like this is this is awful. Um, have it, have it, have, haven't you missed working with me, Lewis? <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I've never been more convinced I'm going to quit a championship in my life. Uh, either way, <laughs> no, obviously not. Um, I'll, I'll allow it. I, I, I want to hear some, some good ones. And by good ones, I mean awful, absolutely awful ones uh, over, the, uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, I'm sure everyone watching does as well. Uh, we uh, can't force them. As, as, can't force them. Can you not? No, can't force them. Got to be on, you know, in, in the moment, spontaneous, Lewis. It's boring, isn't it? You can't think of any really good ones. Boring? You, like, you don't know when it's... You don't know... Much like that move when it's from Rosa, you don't know. Yeah, exactly. Good you don't know when it's going to arrive. And then well, when it does, it's just not what you're looking for. It never is. Uh, either way, coming <laughs> at the head of the field and leading comfortably, someone who is going to uh, try and beat the clock quite comfortably here, I think Luciano Bitfoot. Like you said, he's... he's Coming into his own a little bit there. It pulled out to around about half a second. I know the Malin's closed in just a touch, but whilst Luciano Vip was going a bit aggressive earlier on with the rearward uh, balance of the car, maybe that uh, is coming back to him in a really positive way right now because his car's looking really quite quick and for Malin doesn't seem to have any opportunity to fight his way past. We'll still have a couple of laps, mind, because they should cross the line. It'll be close, but I think will be starting the pen I want to say penultimate lap of the race yeah I'd say penultimate lap as well yeah. lap. I'll, I will doff my cap to Luciano actually because you, you could argue you've thrown a bit of shade his way uh, given his previous record in the championship he, you know, he's always been a point scorer but you always felt he could do more if he didn't get involved in, in, in major scuffles and and we've actually seen a very different side to Luciano here he's still got like that aggressive edge but he really has curtailed it into combining it with his strong pace and just waiting for the best moments to utilize it and and this is why we see him leading now he waited for that moment against Vermeil and made an excellent move uh, as Pfeiffer and is that uh, Pfeiffer and Barmer exchanging positions maybe Hujek as well we'll keep an eye on that as we remain with the front runners and we do see you chat don't worry we shall remain with the front runners until the end of the race is where the winner is of course going to uh, going to emerge from or maybe not who knows this is the EWTCR that is true. crazier things have happened all six could be involved in a monumental wreck. I have seen and been a part of 
my fair share in my sim racing career. Keep your eye, by the way, on the fifth car in this train. Gianmarco Verducci has been super aggressive uh, through this race to, uh, to have worked his way up. Some good, some bad, but presently running in fifth spot behind a super experienced Spence Banky. Uh, who I don't think will open the door too easily, but I will say Fiducci will know that. Up to fifth place, second in the first race, looking for a top five in this one. That would put him very healthily up there in the points. But will he be satisfied with fifth place? Based on how he's been driving mm. on this one, I actually don't think so. I think he's going to be going on it. I would be second and fifth. Great way to start, but this is Fiducci we're talking about. I think he's going to. I think he's going to go for it. Would he be satisfied? No. But then again, he's already he's already rolled the dice a couple of times. He's had some favourable rolls. He's in fifth now from a starting position of of the fifth row. Which for me, ooh, ooh, well, Banky, he's not gonna he's not gonna open wow. the door. He's not gonna close the door from behind. He's gonna open the door in front of him. He's going for the podium on Marvin Mackenberg. He's got the legs on him down the front straight. And this, of course, look at the bump drafting yeah, from Fiducci and Pliska. Of course, teammates, uh, the, the, the Mumbai Falcons driver leading this quartet now into the opening corner. Final lap of the race and around the outside, Marvin Mackenberg tries to take back his podium position. All oh, contact between him and Fiducci. Mackenberg. Oh, a bit of a touch there. Oh, a bit of a launch from John Marco Fiducci on Marvin. Oh, sorry, not Marvin Mackenberg. Sorry, on Ben Spanky. Marvin Mackenberg still on the inside now of this corner. Switches over to the outside. We'll have the better line. And despite all of that position switching, Lewis, it's status quo. Yeah, but look at this. Getting to the outside, coming up towards Valvoline. This could be the opportunity for Fiducci to do it. If he sends it around here, have the inside for Ford, and that could work. But he might not want to do it. It's a very treacherous line going around the outside because of that grass. But he he has sent Ooh, it in. There's a bit of contact on the run down in into Ford. And Gianmarco Fiducci takes over. Look at that, though. Pushed <laughs> straight over. Ben Spanky squeezing Pliska on the exit of, uh, of the Ford uh, curve. I mean, that's one. I'm sure he'd be irritated by the first bit, but that doesn't mean the second bit's okay. <laughs> now, that's worthy of lights flashing. We saw them from Pliska's car. Never spite an Italian, especially in a racing car. Yes, it's almost racing 101 at this point as Luciano Vipvot and, and Axel Vermeil, and they've been laughing their way home. They know that the top two is guaranteed as, they, as long as they don't stumble over each other, really. And I think for Vermeil, and like you say, I, I just don't think he has the tool set to be able to challenge Vipvot here. But then again, it's second place. What great point to throw into the bag. We're already a third of the way through the season once we hit the checkered flag here. And Luciano Vipvot is apparently going to hit that checkered flag and pocket a race win barring something spectacular into the final corner goes ultra defensive Axel Vermeulen going to try and hang it around the outside carbon copy of what we saw from race one carbon copy result as well the car on the outside does not succeed Luciano Vitbode wins race two here in the shootout the first round Vermeulen second Viducci third over nice. Mackenberg so yeah Vitucci in the last they're able to take third I completely missed that Marvin Mackenberg fourth shame for him Banky fifth Followed by Pliska, Hujek, Pfeiffer, Barna, and Hassa. Markovic, Rosen, Dravosikov, Keithley, who got into the points in 14th. What a drive from him. Same could be said of Jersey James Montgomery, who picks up that final point. Yeah, super stuff. But Fiducci, back-to-back -back podium. Second in the first race, third wow. in the second. I mean, that's a very impressive drive. Don't know how he got past Mackenberg, who held on to third place all the way through that race. But a big send from Fiducci puts him right to the top of the points. Luciana Vitfoot with a ninth place finish in the first race, finishes first in this one. I mean, like you say, very, very impressive. Uh, Banky with a couple of top sixes as well. A couple of decent point scorers. The top ten pretty similar first race to second race in who was involved in it a few drivers missing in there one of course being Yuval Rosen who did drop back uh, through the race but I will say I think he did a really good job to stabilize his mentality uh, and yeah. hang on to 12. He, he just had a poor start to the race uh, and ultimately made a bit of a, a poorly judged move which which cost him potentially a, a top 10 finish halfway through but it is still points Lewis and again that's all going to add up by the end of the season. I think Petr Pliska as well having a, a pretty good day at the office. I, I think a lot of people having a good day at the office. In fact, it'd be easier to, to identify who didn't have a great day and who's got work to do, of course. We don't actually know our grid 
going into Shootout 2. It's another pre-qualifying session, so we might yet see some older names re-emerging, thinking that they can qualify with two rounds or four races of this Shootout mini championship to go. Maybe we'll see Gergo Baldi re-emerge. I would certainly love to see that. Maybe some of the more established names, but Jack Keithley is the major name that we got to kind of put underneath the spotlight. David Naj as well. Two names that we do expect to see in the 2023 season. They have got a lot of work to do. Yeah, and like you were saying, pre-qualifying's not low. The, the, the order's not set for who's going to be in the next round, and that includes yeah. uh, those in the top 10, those in the, yeah, the, the leading the championship. No one's a guarantee for next round. And so they've all got to put the work in uh, to, to be on the grid, of course, in a week's time at the Hungaro ring, which, yep. uh, by the way, that's going to be a, a crazy ripper of a race. Love myself a little bit of the Hungaro ring. I've been on and off of it uh, over the over the last few years. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I love this track. And I'm like, no, I can't <laughs> stand it. Uh, in these cars, to be honest, it's it's up there. I really enjoy it. I think it's got a great flow in these uh, in these cars. Oh, it, it produces a banger every single time. And I tell you what, the field will be most happy and most thankful if Gogo Baldi doesn't turn up next week because he is a wizard round there, of course, driven on the actual circuit. IRL, and we hope to see you, IRL, in a week's time. As Lewis said, we've got ourselves the Hungara Wing in a, in a week's time. We've got Motorland Aragon a week on from that. It's a lovely three-week compartmentalized shootout session, which will ultimately lead into the 2023 season. So be sure to subscribe to the Race Room uh, Racing Experience channel, of course, here on YouTube, where all of the live streams will be. Be sure to uh, follow us on Twitter as well. Plenty of news and facts and wonderful things there. Other Race Room-related championships go through there. So uh, it's not just the EWTCR that you have to look forward to too. And that just about wraps things up from us. We will, of course, come back next week with the full point standings just to let you know the state of the championship. But, Lewis, any final thoughts from yourself? No, I think it's been pretty much on topic when it comes to bringing this championship back. It has been on form. Had some great action around a tricky racetrack, and I can't wait to see more. Big thank you to Chris, of course, on production today. Big thank you to all of you for joining us. Big thank you to Lewis McGlade. I've been James Kirk, and from all of us here, it's a very warm goodbye.